Hi, it's Bobby from Fifth Avenue Cake Designs, and today I'm going to share with you my Lambeth style over piped string cake. So let's begin. So the first thing you need is a six inch round cake on um, a tapered bottom. So my board and my bottom are together covered with fondant. And I have the back of the cake facing me. And then you need a six inch round cake dummy which I've already folded in half, folded in half again, and then I folded in half again to get eight. I'm going to unfold it, put it out onto your cake, let's get this way, using just some food safe pins, and when I say food safe I just mean that you haven't used them for anything else. And then from there, get him down. I just took, I have this little um, ruler, but you can make a little paper ruler if you wanted to. And even though obviously my cake is higher, I know that I'm going to hit, so I'm going to line it up with the line on my six inch round, and then I'm going to hit on the three. And I did that all the way around. It's already pre-done. But you'll go around your cake and just mark it with a scriber. And like I said, if you don't have a tiny ruler, you can just mark a piece of cardboard or even um, a note card. A heavy note card will work just fine. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to drop a zero string. And this is just so that I know where I'm going to be piping. So I'm going to start where my hole is, and I'm not really caring if I'm going to fill in that hole at the moment. Obviously I won't with something this tiny. We're going to bring it over to the next one. And I'm not too concerned if it's not perfectly straight. I'm just looking for a guide so I know how far down that first string is going to come. You want them all to come to the same length. So I'll check it when we go around. So just like when you were piping string work, you want to not dip down. Look at how long the other one is and it's curled. So we're going to take this one off. with a damp brush. No big deal. But you want to start your, make your connection. Ah, curled again. I don't want any curls in here because I don't want anything to keep my first line from laying nice. And that's why I'm using a zero for this. And this one curled too. I'll just lightly take that off. So as you are piping your guide, you want to keep in mind that you want it the same amount of depth on your dip. And if it isn't, then take it off. And like I said, I'm not looking for perfection on these. I will be when I'm making string work with this arrow, but not for my guide. So I'm going to make up my bag of icing and I'll see you in a minute. All right, so we have them all on and I've checked them and rechecked them and rechecked them. And they're pretty even. We're just going to use them for a guide. We're going to grab our number 16 tip 
And you want one of the grooves to face up so that in case you have to stop, you can connect without anybody knowing. You just, okay, we're just going to start with a zigzag motion at a 45 degree angle. You just want to come up and down and up and down. And on this, you're going to be working with off-peak consistency. You want to make sure that your wave has one continuous groove going through it at the time. And then you kind of want to keep the top part thinner because you're going to be over piping. You don't want that to be too thick. You're just going to go around your entire cake doing a very tight zigzag motion. You'll be working close to the cake, but you don't really want to touch your cake. I'm releasing my pressure so I can turn my cake. I could have lifted my bag if I wanted to, I just chose not to. So you don't want to start your zigzag right at the top. You just want to come down a little bit before you start your zigzag. And keep nice even pressure. Make sure your bag isn't overfilled. It'll be a lot easier for you to pipe if you don't overfill your bag. And if you have to, lift your elbow up a little bit to get the top. And you wouldn't want to make a bigger guide than the zero because then your icing won't lay nice. And I'm going to show you why I had that groove up. So I stopped. I'm going to make sure that that groove is pointed in the exact same place it was. And I'm just going to reconnect. And if I am accurate in the groove, you shouldn't be able to see where I stopped and stopped, started. So I'll do one more for you and then I'll finish this portion of the cake and show you the next side. Just make sure to keep your bag angled. You want to go up and down. Making sure you have a continuous groove going the whole way. I find my left side is easier. I'll see you when I come back. Just cleaning my tip. You want to keep that tip as clean as possible. Now I'm using a parchment bag, but if you're more comfortable with um, a disposable bag, that's fine. I just find that it lasts longer. So now we're going to over pipe this, and I literally want you to drag this through the center so that you're pretty much touching that icing and you lay nice and flat. And we're still working with our number 16. Keep your pressure constant. Just remember you don't want it to be too bulky at that connection. Just drag it on through. Also, you want to make sure that you have... I got a little too bulky there. You want to make sure you have that continuous groove up on the top so that if you do need to stop and start like I just did, they connect properly. If you need to turn your thing, just loosen up on your pressure and then go back to that same pressure. Uh -huh. 
dragging it straight through your zigzag. And I don't like that drag. It looks like I skipped instead of drag. So I'm going to take a little bit of this off with a damp brush, a lightly dampened brush. Just scrape it off. The icing underneath should be dry enough that it's fine. And right there I'll reconnect. As long as the groove is up, I should be fine. And no one should be able to tell. But you want somewhere where that your neck layer is going to be able to lay nice. Hmm, he just fell off. So make a nice connection. And as soon as you're connected, drag on through that icing. You can use your other hand or finger just to steady the bag. I'm just going to make sure we don't have any places that are not connected nicely. And if I see that it's not hitting where I want, I'm just going to lightly tap it in place. But pretty much I see that we're good. Okay, so we're going to go back to the back of our cake. And you're going to come in, and for the rest of these, you don't need a guide. You're going to come in right at the point there. Make a connection, and just like you would any other time that you're doing stream work, you're going to pull straight out. I don't want very much of a dip. And connect again at there. And you're going to do that all the way around on the, the next section of the cake. Keeping your pressure constant. And just pull straight out. Don't dip your tip. It'll drop by itself. When you have it in place, pull up. Make sure you get a connection. <laughs> If you don't get a connection, then it's going to slide off the cake like it just did for me. And I like to stop and start so I don't get a great big bulk where I'm making my connection. Because you're going to be over piping this too. I 
just going to tighten my bag up. I'm stronger than I thought. I'm also going to clean off my tip as long as I've stopped. I don't know if I have a great connection here. Oh, I might be able to pull it off. And when you get to your final one, just take a peek around and make sure they're all even. There aren't any that you have to redo because you're done with your number 16 tip. So I'll come back and we'll overpipe the rest. Okay, if I didn't say so before, all the tips we're using today are PME except for the one we did for our zigzag and that was a Wilton. So with our number three tip, which is the next one we're using, we're going to make our connection. I've got my turntable tilted away from me so that it forces the string to work with gravity rather than one like we were doing the um, oriental string work I had it piped towards me. So you're going to go ahead and lay your string, your number three, in that groove that you made. Keep constant pressure till you get it to the size that you want. And then have it laid directly in that groove. And just check to make sure you don't have any holes or anything. And with the dampened brush, if you feel that you didn't get your string exactly where you want it, just lightly tap on it and move it. You don't want to tap on the top, it'll smush. So just tap on the side. Okay. Make sure you have a good connection and then pull your tip away. And again, just like before, because we are over piping, we don't want that connection to be very thick. So make sure you loosen up when you get there. By the time you get all the way around your cake, you should be able to go to your next string. I would not pipe directly on top of one that you just did. You want to go all the way around before you begin your over piping, or you'll notice that you start to sag. And that won't look good, having strings sagging off your cake. Release your pressure as you come up to the top. Guide your string along so that it falls right into that groove. And so I'll lightly coax that one right in there. So if you turn it to the side, it's easier to see, or at least it's for me. It should look like just one continuous movement. And then release your pressure on the top.
Now you want to make a your string roll icing using the recipe I gave for the oriental string work. So you want this to be a little bit more mobile. So now we're going to come down to this string work here, make your connection, and do the exact same thing. We did not have a great connection, did we? Keep your eye on your icing. Start releasing your pressure as you get to the top. And I'm hoping I don't have to refill this bag before we get all the way around. Since I still have the next layer to pipe. But we'll see. I would much rather pipe with a small bag, so if I need to refill or make another bag, it's no big deal. I have more control that way. So if you watch your icing, then you'll know exactly where to lay it. Okay. Once you get that done, you can go ahead and right below that, pipe your number three string. I'm going to do the exact same thing. And I want these, oh, maybe a centimeter apart. Be careful not to touch the string work above. Since we're working fairly tight. want to keep an eye on that. Remember to pipe at your own pace, whether that's fast or slow. Don't try and keep up with somebody else.
I actually find doing string work is relaxing. Just lift him up and get him out. Remember to keep your tips covered when not using them. I use like a little wash rag that I have never used for anything, but actually, my tips. If you don't have a tilting turntable, you can use um, like a acrylic cup with a grippy on it and kind of tilt it for you. Just kind of make a makeshift one or put some books down. That always works too. And you can see that he's too long, so I'm going to take him off real quick my damp brush. It's the back, so it's not that big of a deal, but I'd like it all to look kind of even. Just clean that up real quick. And I was able to do it without refilling my bag, so that's great. Okay. So now we're going to take our number two. I'm just going to clean off my hands real quick. And we're going to do the exact same thing. So we'll make our connection. And then you want to stay right in the center of that number three. Now I'm using, I'm right-handed, so I'm using my left pointer finger not to push on my bag, but to keep it steady. Since I can't rest my arm down on the table. And I will generally use my finger to guide me. And every so often check and make sure that you don't have any space or else it won't look like one continuous line. And if you wanted to, you could just you don't have to do the number 16, you could like do a number 4 or a 5 and go ahead and just pipe strings. Now I did um, paddle out my icing to make sure I didn't have any air bubbles in there just like we did when we were working with the zero and when I did my zero guide I went ahead and did the same thing and I have numbered my parchment bag so that because I can't see the number on my nozzle so that way I know which one I'm grabbing.
And I like to use um, a marker to number it and rather than a pencil since I find that the graphite sometimes will come off of my hand and then that makes a mess on you and you realize your hand you don't see the number anymore. They go a little bit over, which is fine. I'm just going to scrape that off. I don't want to leave that excess on because it will make it so that I have a bump. I don't want a bump. No, oh, we are all the way around. I almost went too far. So now we're going to go to our next layer. I got so carried away with talking, I almost redid that one. I did not get a good connection. The exact same thing. You just want to make sure that you're laying right in the center of your number three line. And the reason I want, like I said before, this cake to be tilted away from me is it forces that icing to go ahead and attach itself to the next layer or to the cake. Make your connection. And pull out. And then as you get to the top, release your pressure. And keep your nozzle clean at all times so that way you don't have to worry about any clogging happening. And the reason I'm using the PME tips, and I think I've talked about this before, is that they're seamless. So I don't have to worry about my icing curling on me or coming out odd. And it really makes a big difference as you go down in your number. All right, so now we're going to work on our next layer. And the smaller that your nozzle gets, 
the less icing you want to put in your bag. It makes it easier on your hand. You want to oh, make a good connection there. Just gonna take that off. And I started on the back of my cake in case anything didn't line up. Normally I wait to put on my cute little bow until after I get done decorating. Because I noticed it gets in the way sometimes. As you go down in numbers, they will start drying a little bit faster too. Good thing I never my bag, I just grabbed a number one. That would have been horrible. As you can see, if you don't pay attention, it's really easy to just keep going. And I know I've said this before, but you really don't want to leave your icing in a bag for more than 20 minutes without rebeating it. It'll start to break down on you. Okay, so now we're going to put our number two line in. We're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to make a connection that we're going to pull out. come over to the other side.
If it helps, you can make a little mark where you want. your string to fall. Or you can use the string previous to guide you. If you notice, I don't know if you saw that it got very thin as I was pulling out. If you notice that happening, it's probably better to stop than to try and make it work like I just did. I'm going to tighten up my bag. I only let my bag fill up, or only fill up my bag. I don't let it, I do it. Halfway. That's easiest for my hands. You don't want to hold more icing than is comfortable for your hand. I'm just going to go in and clean up right here. Right, and now we're going to work with our number one. We're going to do the exact same thing. And as you can see, as your icing, as your tip nozzle gets smaller, a little bit trickier to keep it straight. Now I did run my number one through a stocking to be sure that my tip would not clog up at all. And again you want it to lay right in the center of that number two. I'm going to tighten my bag a little bit. I can tell that I don't have a good connection there. My finger's having trouble hanging on to it. So if you notice it gets really hard to pipe and it's a brand new bag, you might want to make sure that you have made a nice pad for your thumb. I'm just going to clean my hand off real quick because I have some icing on it. It always surprises me how when you're whipping up Realizing it looks so soft and marshmallowy and like a cloud to how hard it dries. Getting a 
up there and see. You're going to want to make sure you have your dampened brush right by you in case you need it. And like I said, watch your icing, especially as you get down to the thinner or smaller. Alright, so we made it all the way around on the top. Now we're going to work on the next row. We're just going to do the exact same thing. Keeping our tip levels with the cake and not dipping down so that we can have a nice connection. Like I said, it's really important to keep your eye on your icing. And start releasing your pressure as you get to the top. So I went ahead and filled up my bag and finished the second row because I'm sure you're getting bored watching me just pipe string after string. And you get the idea that you just need to work, gradually work your way down. So now we're on our next row, which started with a number three nozzle, which would be our third row. And we're going to do the same thing all the way around. So I'll do one more. And then I'll come back when we're in the fourth row. And then show you the fifth row. Which will be, of course, another one. So like the others before, make sure it lays right in the center of your number two line. And I will see you when we get down to the next row. Okay, so now we're going to type our fourth row with the number one. And same as before, you want to lay right in the center of your preceding string work. That one. Just small and little, so I'm just going to scooch him up just a tad. And we'll do the next one. And I'll work my way around, and then I'll see you to do our fifth. Alright, so now we're going to pipe our number one string. And because our top layer has at least five over piped design. So we've got the zigzag swag, then we have the 16 
um, straight groove line. We have our number three, our number two, and our number one. It's considered traditional Lambeth. So somewhere on your cake, it doesn't have to be everywhere, you need to have five over pipe lines. And we have that. So by definition, we can call this a Lambeth cake. I just don't like that string very much. I'm going to take it off before it sets. I'm not too worried about that inside connection. We're going to be hiding that with um, some roses and blossoms. So it's not as perfect as I would hope. It's okay because you're not going to see it. it's going to be hidden. So just like all the rest of the strings, you want to pull out nice and straight and let the string just fall down. And you want it to be close without touching. If your bag is hurting your hand or your thumb, something's not okay and you need to repeat your icing. There's no reason, first of all, you'll pipe better if you're more comfortable. Second of all, there's no reason to hurt yourself over this. Start releasing your pressure right about here and lay it in the groove. All right, so we made it around our cake. I'm going to clean up right here. And I'm going to show you how we hide the little connection points. So I'll get my stuff ready and I'll show you that in a minute. Alright, so now we want to attach our roses and blossoms to our string work to hide the connection. So in order to do that, the easiest way that I found is I make a little dot right here. with my number zero. And then I take my rose. These are toothpick roses, which I have made a video on and I will give the link. Put with your leaf tip two leaves on the back of your rose and attach it to the very tippy top. And you're going to have to hold it for just a few minutes lightly. You don't want to break anything. And then take your five petal blossoms and these should be done ahead of time. And the same thing. You're going to pipe a little dot on your connection. Nothing major, you don't have to worry about points or anything. 
and then again pipe two little leaves and I use a little bit of a beading tweezers just to get in there Your blossoms are going to hold a lot easier than your rose because so they're not as heavy and they're flat on the bottom. So just keep going down. Doing the exact same thing. And it's alright if your leaves show. Coming out. because flowers have leaves and calyxes and stuff. And I will tell you these sugar flowers are very fragile. And you're going to want the top part of your blossom to be pointed upward. So it all looks nice when it's done. And you see it coming down. And when you're piping your blossoms, if you find that you, know, you make extra, that's fine. You can store them for later. It doesn't really matter. Now, because of how large I did make my blossoms, it covers the last two bottom strings. So I don't have to worry about putting on more than the three blossoms. I found that it looked too cumbersome to do that. And there you go. I'll continue to finish putting these on. I hope you enjoyed learning how to do some Lambeth string work with me. And I'll see you in the next video.